Welcome along to Parker Scarlets. It's the start of a brand new season, but the day is wreathed in sadness. One of the most iconic voices in rugby, the one that has so often provided the soundtrack to occasions such as these, has fallen silent. On Thursday, Eddie Butler, our friend, our colleague, and the voice of rugby in Wales, died peacefully in his sleep. It's difficult to believe that someone with such vigour, such zest for life, is no longer here with us. He was rugby's renaissance man, a player, captain, broadcaster, storyteller, author and commentator. But above all, he was a great bloke, charismatic, humble and generous in equal measure. Everyone here at Premier Sports sends their deepest condolences to Eddie's wife, Susan, his children and all those who knew and loved him. Yeah, welcome along to you all at the end of what's been an incredibly emotional week. Uh, Tom Shanklin is alongside me. And Tom, like me, like probably most people watching today, it's so difficult to process this, that someone so charismatic and with such a zest for life, would we say, is no longer with us. Someone you grew up listening to, I grew up listening to, someone who commentated on some of your most iconic moments in a, a whale shirt. He, is, he was a singular, unique talent, and he's left a void that cannot be filled. Devastated, Ross. It still hasn't sunk in. You know, we turn up at the start of the season. We expect to see him here. You know, we won't hear his voice live again. You know, he was like the father figure, wasn't he? Mm. You know, the father figure of commentary. You'd look at, you know, the talent list and, and you'd see who's first voice commentator. And if you saw Eddie Butler's name, you knew, you know, you, you were going to be looked after. You knew you had the best alongside you. So I'm absolutely devastated because... What an iconic voice he had. You know, even if the game was boring, he could colour it yeah. beautifully with his voice. Um, you didn't even have to enjoy rugby just to be able to listen uh, to his tones and his, his use of language. So it's, it's still not sunk in and um, I'm absolutely devastated by it. Yeah, I think you speak for us all in that regard. It's going to be a tough one to get through today without Eddie there in the press room with us, having a cup of tea and a chat, as we became so used to. Uh, you kind of touched on it there, and this is something that's come through in a lot of the tributes to Eddie over the past couple of days, uh, the, the lyrical nature of his prose, the almost poetic way he called a game of rugby. He was yeah. so different to anyone else in that regard. There'd be no notes. You know, he had an unbelievable knowledge of language. You know, everything would be up here, you know, it was a human dictionary, mm. you know, throwing out words, you don't even know what they mean, but they just fit beautifully with, with what he was saying. And yeah, he had a way with, with language, he had, his voice was smooth. It was, it was wonderful to listen to, not just rugby, you know, it could be documentaries, it could be montages, you know, he was, he was just the man when it came to that. And that's what I loved about him as well. You mentioned not just rugby. Often we turn up at events like this, uh, work days, and it is rugby, 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 wall to wall. But he was such a, a polymath. He had such interests way beyond sport and way beyond rugby. You could talk to him about literally anything. You know, the, mm. the latest goings on at Westminster, the latest documentary he'd watched or film he'd seen. Um, and, you know, we talked... Uh, yesterday about how he got heavily involved in the Welsh independence movement. He was such a, a multifaceted bloke, wasn't he? Yeah, massively. You know, had an interest in everything and you'd find common ground with him because he knew so much. You know, you walk into the room and you think you're quite bright. If Eddie yeah. Butler's in there, not at all. You know, he was by far, you know, the most intelligent person that was around. But, you know, he was brilliant. He was brilliant to work with as well, especially when you're, when you're new to this job of, of co-coms. You know, you turn up and it was Eddie's show. You were just in the slips. You were just part of the ride. And especially when you're young, you're doing it. And, and he knows far more than anyone about this job. And I remember, um, you know, turning up fresh face to do co-coms. And part of it is, is being able for the listener to hear crowd. And Eddie would describe a try. And then all of a sudden, you, you're about to give your uh, analysis of it. And this big hand would come over <laughs> in your face like this, telling you to stop. Just let the game breathe. And you're thinking, well, when, when? And then all of a sudden, he'd open it up and allow you to speak. And, and that's what he was like. You know, he was the master at it. And, you know, you, you just had to learn from him. You just had to listen to him. Yeah. Almost like the conductor of an orchestra. Yes, with exactly. As, as lead violin. Um, and we've, we've talked about that a lot in the last few days as well. The economy of style. You know, the fact that often broadcasters, especially when you're new to it, feel an urge to fill the space, to fill 
the dead air. But on television in particular, that, that is not the way to do it, is it? And Eddie was a master of that, knowing how to carefully choose one word, a couple of words that could convey so much. Knowing not when to speak as well mm. was the key. And, you know, as we said, he, he was the best. You know, you, th you think about the voices before him um, and you think about the void he filled after that. You know, Bill McLaren, mm -hmm. one of the greatest voices. Then you had Ellie Butler. And it, it just, it's so weird that we're not going to hear that voice live again. I, I'm deeply saddened by it. And you talked about his sort of generosity of spirit, the fact he was always the brightest person in the room, mm. but he wore that very lightly, didn't he? There was never any sense he was kind of self-aggrandizing or, or he knew that. He was a, a Cambridge graduate, played three times in the varsity match, but he always found common ground with anyone who he's, he shared company with. Yeah, completely, completely that. You know, you could talk to him about sport, you could talk to him about politics, anything, a Netflix series, yeah. you know, no matter what, you, you'd find ground. And he was such a welcoming man as well. And, and so easy to speak to. And it, it just feels really weird, doesn't it, Ross? Turn up here and, and he's not there mm. to have a chat with before the game. So, um, you know, I think everyone's in shock still. Um, and our condolences, like you said, are yeah. with his family uh, and the people he knew. Absolutely. And just to add as well, finally, you know, he, he, he died uh, doing something for charity. He was, mm. he was trekking the Inca Trail in Peru for charity, something that he did so much of that went unnoticed because he didn't do it to draw attention to himself. No. He did it in that ambassadorial way to help people who were suffering. And that yep. was Eddie all over. Yeah, it was. You know, he, he wasn't on social media. Mm. I don't think he knew how to use social media. Um, but, you know, he's doing a charity trip. He's raising money. And it's just a sad, deeply sad way for him to pass, and, and a man who's only 65 years old as well. You know, he had years and years left in, yeah. in his life, in, in his work. Um, I'll tell you what, though, I'll, I'll have more sweets left, um, <laughs> because at half time, when you come down to do these things, the big mitt of Eddie <laughs> Butler's right? hand would be dipping in your bag and, and taking all your well, sweets. So You do need sustenance, don't you? Uh, yeah. It has been an incredibly emotional day. It will continue to be all day.